Okay, so I'm going to take a look again at this bootstrapping example. Uh, the type of estimation it involves uh, requires us to find the interest rate at the earlier term. So we start at the lower rung of the ladder, um, the six months, and then go to the 12 months, and the 18 months, and the two years. So in order to estimate the zero coupon yield, uh, for the 24-month period, for the two-year two year period, I've got to use the earlier interest rates to strip off the coupons. So the earlier interest rates are obtained by, uh, when there's no coupons, it's relatively straightforward. We just take log each side and we deduce what the interest rate is. But then as we move out uh, to the longer dated bonds to the 1.5 year bonds that are coupon bearing we have to take the respective coupons and discount at the rates earlier rates that we discovered for six months and for 12 months and likewise for um for the two-year bond that has three well actually has four coupons but has three earlier coupons coming on the bond those have to be discounted separately and then stripped from the instrument. And all this is relatively uh, com computationally intensive um, in the sense that uh, the stripping involves a fairly long-winded exercise in addressing each of the coupons. Now, a more straightforward process here is, let's go into um, Excel for a moment. And we could say, look, uh, the data that we have here in terms of the bond instrument might be given in terms of the following information we have uh, to start off with here we have um, we have uh, time periods so if you like we have bond prices of uh, 94.89 so 94 and what do we get for that bond well in time period zero we've got to pay 94 so negative 94 has to go out but in return we get a um, hundred dollars back after 0 0.5 years and again we have um, one year 1.5 years and we have two years okay and maybe make this a little bit bigger to make it a little bit more visible then uh, in and we could say well in year one month 18 month 24 no additional cash flows and then the second bond instrument we pay 89 so it is a negative 89 in time period zero and it's a treasury instrument a treasury bill so there's no coupon it's not coupon bearing um in at month six we don't get anything back month 12 we do we get 100 but further on zero and we get zero and then likewise um for the three for this 18 month instrument you must pay 94 so it's negative 94 and um, 84 and in this instance there is a coupon of four being paid semi-annually so we have a four we have a four and 104 okay and zero at the end and then for the final bond instrument which is a 24 bond 24 month bond instrument we pay 97 12 okay so that's negative 97 12 and yes we get five we get five coupon in month six five coupon month 12 uh, five coupon month 18 and 105 at the end okay now, when we worked out, if we come back here for a second to put these side by side and pause. Okay, so I've got these side by side here in terms of estimation. So for uh, to get the six month estimation, this was the workings to get the uh, 12 month zero coupon yield. This was how we made the estimation for the 18 month esti zero coupon yield. And remember the zero coupon yield is being used to estimate the term structure of interest rates or the yield curve likewise for the two year or the 24 month zero coupon yield quite a few 
estimations have to be done. Uh, a simpler way of making that estimation is to use linest. So equals to linest. And then we can set out the known y's. Okay, and we could say, okay, y, negative these values. And then uh, known cash flows. Okay, and we don't need a constant. In fact, we just, uh, constant is not, uh, we must leave out. So we say false and false, and we don't need further statistics. Now I can just return that and I get a number back. Okay, that's fine. And then if I highlight again and control shift enter, control shift enter, we get an array output. And to see what these are, well, uh, if we come back here for a moment, uh, we have um, if we say uh, natural log negative natural logarithm. And we take this 94 and divide it by the time period of six months we get an interest rate of 12.375 which is the same as here likewise if i go uh, equal to negative natural logarithm open bracket take the interest rate the discount factor actually and divide it by divided by the respective time period which would have been one year Okay, I get 11.65, which is the same as what we have here. Again, if I use negative natural logarithm, the discount factor, and divide it by the respective time period, which in this instance would have been 1.5, I get 11.50, which is what I have here. And then for the final one, for year 2, month 24, if I take, again, negative natural logarithm, open bracket, the discount factor, divided by two years, I get 11.2989, which is the same as what we have here. In other words, if we had taken these cash flows, if when we do the Linest estimation, right, we could estimate the cash flows onto an OLS regression onto negative times the initial cash flows which have to be minus because you're paying money to own the bond. If we run that regression control shift enter we get the discount factors and then to convert the discount factors however the ordering changes if this is six months one year 18 months two years then the ordering is is changed right so Oh, well, Linest actually reverses the order of the variables. That's one of the features of Linest. Uh, sometimes that's not uh, a major problem here. It actually just means we've got to be conscious of that when adjusting the discount factor, right? When we adjust the discount factor, control shift enter. When we adjust the discount factor, we've got to divide by two so this discount factor is associated with this time period okay but the results we get are correct and the, the key thing to note here is that we can make the estimation uh, a lot quicker and um, a lot more efficient using linest so if we had a, a bigger set of data and cash flows from the bond we could actually recover these uh, continuous interest rates Right, uh, by applying ordinary least squares using Linest. Okay, now could we set this up in Google Sheets? Okay, just for argument, for completeness. Okay, I'm going to go into Google Sheets for a moment. So, okay, Google Sheets. G O G L E Sheets. And run the same estimation again go to google sheets and it's a new google sheet and i'm going to paste in the same set of data that we have right paste and we get the same and then i'm going to run linest equal to linest open bracket 
and then in the and I can take the y variables, which are the uh, cash, uh, the cash flows, yeah, the initial cash flows. So these are the y's. We can take the independent variables, the cash flows, the coupon payments, and the fees. And we can do faults. And let's just try true, see what happens. Okay, so we guess. Uh, I think this is an R squared of. 100% and um, th that's bound to happen. We can fully explain in this Linus estimation. We can, uh, the, we get a precise uh, estimate. Okay, so we don't really have to worry about that. If you go back into Linus for a second, maybe I should, instead of saying verbose, we just put in false. Okay, and the, the summary then that we get is just the discount factors in the estimation and they're consistent with the values I would have obtained here. So if I come back again with what I had before, let's just copy and come back in to the spreadsheet and I'll just uh, edit, paste, special uh, values and the values we obtain are the same except for the negatives of course. So I can recover then, it's very simple then to recover the interest rate, I just take the natural logarithm and divide by the respective time period and keeping in mind that it's negative. Let's just try um, equal to natural logarithm open bracket, um, try that again, equal to um, close bracket divided by 2. Uh, 11 and we can just remove put a negative here as well okay 11.2 and that's 11.2 uh, okay I'll just copy these values copy and paste below Okay, and I, I'm getting, I'm recovering the same values. If I do that again, um, we could pull it across, I suppose. And instead of dividing by 2, it would have been uh, 1.5. 1.5. And it's, we recovered the same value. And instead of dividing here by 2, I'm dividing by 1, 1, and instead of dividing here by 2, I'm dividing by 0 0.5, okay, 0, 0 0.5, and 12, and I'm recovering the same values. So essentially, I can use Google Sheets to do a Linux estimation as well and to recover the term structure of interest rates if these were the bond prices and these were the respective time periods or maturities and these were the cash flows in the bond then I can transfer or transpose this into zero coupon bond yields for the respective time periods but again the order has been reversed this is time period 0 0.5 this is time period 1 time period uh, 1.5 years 18 months and 24 months so the order gets reversed with this Lin -S estimator in Google Sheets we also are reversing the order of the time periods as well same as Excel